in my opinion, I have just as nice a piece of property as most people do, and they're all native plants. I'm convinced there's nothing you can't plant in a native that has its opposite in some popular imported plant. Uh, this is one of the few trees in the yard that isn't native. It's a Chinese fringe tree. I do have some American fringe trees in the yard. Uh, but I planted this thing years ago before I knew any better. And now it's so beautiful, I just don't have the heart to cut it down. So <laughs> it stays. You know, when you move into a place like this, uh, this was just solid trees and, and weeds and native plants when we cleared it to build on. And you feel a little bit guilty that, you know, you're taking area away from wildlife that had existed there for years. So part of my philosophy was we'll try to add back to it and try to maintain the wildlife and keep them here, uh, keep them coming back. And to her right is a red horse chestnut, which is a beautiful little tree that attracts insects, butterflies, uh, and of course birds. Uh, hummingbirds love it as well. I started out planting native plants because I thought it was a way to easily maintain the property and attract wildlife. And that, yeah, that is great. But through all that, I grew almost as interested in the native plants as I did the wildlife I was trying to attract. Trees like this rusty black haw here, which is native to Oklahoma, great wildlife tree, attracts a lot of insects. It gets fruit on it that matures in the fall that attracts birds, chalk maple, which is also native to Oklahoma. These understory trees are hawthorns, great for nesting, they get berries on them. Uh, right there behind you is a nest box with a pair of chickadees nesting in it, have babies in there right now. This is a red buckeye, native to Oklahoma, as is that shrub there. Great hummingbird tractor, as you might imagine. And a wafer ash over here, also native to Oklahoma. It's the host plant for the giant swallowtail caterpillars. Dead ahead of us here is a basswood. They call them basswood in America, linden trees in Europe. But in about two weeks, this tree will just be covered with blossoms. And it really pulls the bees, insects, pollinators. And it has a great fragrance, by the way. But it's the wildlife. You know, that's what started me. Uh, trying to give back a little bit to the wildlife that, again, when we develop this property, uh, trying to turn it back into a little bit of a wildscape for the wildlife that was already here, and hopefully for the wildlife that was going to come. And this little area here, I tend to leave it kind of wild, uh, not normally quite this wild, but I wanted to wait for this plant here to come up so I knew where it was. This is called wing stem. And it's a very important, very beneficial fall plant for the pollinators. Well, we have all the resident birds, the native birds, the blue jays, the cardinals, the tent mice, the chickadees, migratory birds as well. We get a lot of stopovers that come, indigo bunnings come and they nest here and uh, Baltimore Orioles come, they nest here, Orchard Orioles. You know, out back in the retaining walls out there, there's a lot of spaces out there for wildlife like groundhogs and foxes and, you know, uh, deer. Get, we get deer through here quite often. I've seen badgers out there. I, there's just uh, a whole fascinating world. No, I mean, I've always been interested in photography to a certain degree, but not wildlife photography. <laughs> Every time. Yeah, he saw us. I became more and more interested in it because I wanted to record 
all these things I was seeing. It was more of a thing that I could go back and say, hey, okay, uh, you know, I can go there now and I can look and see when the Baltimore Orioles arrived last year because I've got pictures of them when they came here. You can do that with a notebook as well. But man, there's nothing like having a photograph. And I became more knowledgeable with my photography because I studied the birds, studied their habits, learned how I might be able to track them in to get photographs of them to start with. Uh, and they both passions just kind of grew from there. I thought, how can I set up a blind here that will pull the birds in and I can shoot them uh, without really disturbing them? The more I studied it, the more I thought, well, gosh, I've got the perfect setup right out there on the south side. If I just put some feeders out there and put some bird baths out there, I can sit right in the garage, crack the door open a little bit, and take photos within 20 or 30 feet of me. Uh, they tend to come in here and be real comfortable because I'm out of sight, just like you would be in a bird blind. And it keeps me out of the weather, you know, <laughs> which is a real plus for me. You know, in my opinion, what I have done here is really pretty simple. I mean, it, you know, I put in some trees, I put in a few shrubs, I put in a few flowers. It didn't break the bank. Uh, it wasn't, I mean, it was some work, sure. But I didn't do anything here that anybody couldn't do in their neighborhood. And can you imagine if we had whole neighborhoods full of stuff like this, the wildlife we would have, what benefit that would be to our to our earth, to our wildlife, to people. Uh, well, I can't encourage people enough to just start small. Just start with a little piece of ground here and make little islands like I've done here for the wildlife and for you. <laughs>